Patch 2.1 introduced some changes and buffs to a few exotic weapons, so today I want to talk about two exotics in particular that were not very good, the first curse and dragon's breath. So how are they now? The first curse is up first. This weapon used to just not be good because it fired too slow, did too much overkill damage, and generally was not worth using over something like Hawkmoon. In patch 2.1, its main bonus got a buff. Now, the first curse bonus activates on the first precision kill that you get, which now instantly refills your magazine, in addition to all of the other things that it did before, increased range, stability, etc., until you reload the gun. In addition, you have the global hand cannon buff, which improved accuracy. The thing that most surprised me was how much more reliable the gun felt from range. I was hitting shots that I don't normally think I was able to hit before. I was actually really enjoying my time with it during the Prove Your Worth and War Priest encounters because those fights typically have these short bursts of fighting and those are the times where the first curse can excel. The first curse bonus isn't really that useful for regular enemies since you're probably going to one shot a lot of low and even mid tier enemies. However, for killing stuff like Hive Knights, Wizards, Fallen Captains, stuff that actually takes more than one shot to kill, it is a significant buff for those kinds of situations and, in certain cases, can net you more shots per reload than something like Hawkmoon. However, the amount of times you're actually fighting in ideal first curse situations are not as high as one might think. While proccing the bonus on low tier stuff isn't ideal, the range and stability part is still very handy. This still obviously is not a great boss killing weapon, there are certainly better options, but overall, the gun is at the very least a little bit more usable than it was before for PvE. Is it top tier? Probably not, but it's certainly better than where it was before. I'm personally not the biggest fan of the weapon archetype, I'm way too used to the Hawkmoon rate of fire, so I'm not the greatest at firing the weapon at the correct tempo. In PvP, well, on a technical level, it's better because of the buffs, but my god is it still bad. Especially with this new bum rush people with last word meta the game is currently devolving into. Obviously, headshot kills are going to keep you in the action longer when getting that first proc, and the range sort of feels better, but not really. The fact that it fires so slowly just makes it awful. There are so many better weapons out there for passive play. If you're not getting the first shot off, you're probably going to lose, and while I realize that's the case for a lot of weapons, it's the case for this weapon the most so. If I were to reevaluate its tier list rankings, this weapon would go from a C plus in both categories to a B to a low B plus in PvE, and would stay the same in PvP. Why I was so lenient with this weapon in PvP the first time around, I have no idea. This thing does not deserve the C plus that I gave it, and should be reduced in ranking significantly. Dragon's Breath sees a return modified from its year 1 stats. In year 1, the weapon used to hold 3 rockets, fired them incredibly slow, and left a solar grenade in its wake. However, in year 1, enemies were tuned to dodge AoE, so the only time it was useful was against bosses. In year 2, the solar grenade has been replaced with a much larger AoE of Napalm. The tripod bonus was removed in favor of Surplus, and it also gains Who's Next, where a kill speeds up the reload, although it still feels very slow. It also now only has one rocket in the chamber, and still fires incredibly slow. I think it's better than it was in Year 1, not that it was complete garbage in Year 1, but Year 1 had G-Horn, and nothing was going to stop G-Horn. Without G-Horn, its only competition is Truth, and I think for certain situations, Dragon's Breath wins. The Napalm AoE field is very large, meaning it can wipe out a ton of low tier stuff or piss off high health enemies, doing almost G-Horn like damage if the enemy sits in the AoE field the entire time. Does it do it as quickly? No. But it's still capable of hitting a target hard, then doing a ton of extra solar damage to them, provided that they sit in the AoE and haven't died from the impact. I'm pretty excited to do some Warpriest related things with this gun, although the last time my group and I messed around with Dragon's Breath, it was in the Vault of Glass where we repeatedly crashed our game. Fun times. However, the weapon isn't just going to spread Hellfire everywhere it goes, and proper use of the weapon, utilizing it where it is going to make the most impact, is situational. Dragon's Breath isn't always going to be the answer to every problem. There's often that feeling of wanting to hit a target with the rocket, while also wanting to place the napalm in an ideal position, so those who learn which scenarios the weapon can perform best in will see some great results. 
For example, the beginning of the Fallen Saber Strike is a great spot for this weapon due to the fact that there is a small trickle of enemies. You can blast away a lot of stuff at the beginning with a rocket, then as more things spawn, they will sit in the AoE field and die. In PvP, I imagine it would be hilarious to fire this thing and spread napalm everywhere, but without tracking and without a high velocity, this won't be anything more than a novelty. Simple as that. Pretty much every other rocket is better, but not nearly as funny. Dragon's Breath's previous ranking in the House of Wolves was a B plus in PvE and a B in PvP. Looking back on that, it probably should have been a little bit lower. I'd actually downgrade it in PvP because of the loss of tripod and probably leave it about the same for PvE, B plus to maybe a low A. It should have been a B when I previously reviewed it. Those are some quick and dirty evaluations of two guns I was hoping would see some improvement. Super Good Advice is another gun I'd like to look into with its changes, which we will explore hopefully very soon. DPS evaluations are on the way. Until then, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.